Okay. Tell me that we're going to add signs, I promise. And so, as a result of this meeting, will there be a list of actions and then the follow through on that at a later date? Yeah, because I get it. It'll take minutes right now. Okay. Okay. You've heard some of them. I catch base and thrills me. And I love that, like, that's, okay. ten, that's a 10 million gallon kit of catch basin that is overkill. And it I'm is. thrilled about what that. What doesn't thrill me is the whole, I'm still stuck on, because that's what I do for a living, documentation. <coughs> because, again, I'm, I am concerned that at the end of the day, you can throw a pint of all the jobs and throw some money at this. But if you don't have these folks trained, and if you don't have training, and people and retrain yearly, and if you don't have the right stuff in your procedures, you're just going to have another problem again and again. And I'd like to take the time to, to show you something that's kind of interesting. I lived, I moved here to Hamilton County four years ago, and I want to show you my legs. Once I started taking showers in the well system off the Wipsiduchi River. That's my life. I didn't have a spot on them until I moved to Hamilton County. And I, I live now closer. I live two blocks from the Wipsiduchi today. And before I moved to where I am today, I lived four blocks. Now, my, and I know, I have, this is one neighbor that, Gene, he just finds bottled water. I have another neighbor, Ace Smith, and lives on 44. He's on a fixed income, and he's going and getting distilled water. He takes showers in distilled water. He doesn't use his well water to take showers. Now, that's just two that live a half a mile from me. How many more people do we have that are fixed income in that basin within two, three, four blocks of the Wipaduchi that, that are having this problem? Can we move forward? Any other questions? Ms. Parker, if I may. Yes. Uh, at our meeting today, unfortunately, it came to light and found out that uh, our Florida Health Department and DEP has been alternating daily water testing along the Wicca River. And um, as of the test that was pulled the 6th of January, the 6th of January at the uh, Valosta Highway, um, I call it Mass and Valosta Highway 31 and 445, um, had an extremely high level of coliform in the coli. And it, and then today's results came back. Uh, we just got those results from yesterday's testing at 150 at the Belleville Bridge. Apparently the flow or some of the flow has reached dangerous levels there. Um, we have, like I said before, Madison County, Hamilton County, this year's local space for emergency. We're fixing to probably have a special call meeting to extend hours again and uh, in the next few days but we've had this will be our third health advisory of this field that, that our Florida Department of Health and DEP has issued for Florida on the River Future River. <coughs> I'm assuming that they will probably have a health advisory issue tonight. Yeah the health the, I, I was just texting the health department and they said there's going to be another advisory come out tonight because of what they found Monday and what and, and Tuesday. So this this is an unusual event because normally within a day or two it comes to us and, and uh, it's over with, but this isn't that way. It's coming in slow and, and you know, so for almost a month now uh, we're having to issue these advisories to stay out of the river. So on January the 6th the DEP data <coughs> was for E. coli 7,776 parts per, per 100 milliliters and it was at 4,500 for coliform. Safe levels in Florida, I don't know how to answer Georgia, I believe there's anything above 400 for coliform, is that right? 400. And 
800 for E. coli. And uh, today at 150, the results was 20, 2,700 at 150 today, which is uh, about a third of, <coughs> about a third of one that we've got one to six. So we're, we're concerned about with this, the way the water flow is in the river right now. It's just very, as you know, the river's low, you have very little flow going on. Some of our concerns is a lot of this material may either be trapped in some of the, the low-lying areas or slews in the along the river banks. And as we have these rain events, I had I live two miles from the river, State River Six, in Madison County. I had an inch of rain Friday night. And I'm thinking that the city of Isle Austin had something similar to that. So it just seems to me what I'm seeing here, when we have a, a, a rain event right now of an inch or so, you, you start to see more of this release being done and you start seeing these higher levels. And my fear is that, and, and our DEP and the Florida Department of Health is committed, and they're going to be testing daily until they get you know, they, they tested eight days with no levels of high bacteria, and then they, the second time they lifted the advisory on the second event. And now it appears we're basically going to another advisory. For those of you that live in Madison, Hamilton, Swanee, you know, prepare this going to be probably issue tonight. And I don't know how many days that advisory will be up until we get those same levels again. But then my concern is, I don't need to drag this out. Is what's behind you know, uh, this, this may be a long-term event for us, and, and we're having to tell our folks, don't drink it, don't get in it, don't you know, test your wells, and do all this stuff. And uh, I, I just, I'm trying to show you or point out the, the impact that this has on everybody. And uh, we've got a lot of, we've invested a lot of I'll just put it out there and clap that we would hopefully, we would expect to see about Austin to assist us in recouping some of the costs we've had in including her to monitor our, and help our citizens. So just put that as an ask and uh, we'll go from there. About the personal costs, people who have to buy water because they can't drink water in the river. Yes, the compensation for that at all?
Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, I just want to make a statement. I mean, I've been sitting here listening to this. I understand the reason you guys know I've been a part of it. Uh, and I don't mean to take up your time. <coughs> you know, you talk about communication, you're talking about you know, getting the word out and the things going on here. I know you got a man in the council people. Y'all take it on the chin. I feel like you do. You're not taking it harder than any of us. You hear it from a lot of our constituents. And you're talking about the manhole in the woods. The first email I got from Mr. Barber, it said just that. But it was still in the woods, heavily wooded area, behind target. In that email, there was not one mention of a sugar creek. Any more way, anything as bad as it would be in the woods. And we get that email about 12 hours before we get to the place. So as social media started lighting up with all that, I'm defending the fact that, you know, yes, it's a bad split, but I don't think it's hit any of the waterways from what I've been told. That wasn't the case. You know, like another word, I had crap on my face when the meeting came out in the pressure. So from what I'm hearing from you, you know, you guys and uh, people here in the audience tonight, they just want to count and go. You know, you guys send me out to work on a manhole, <coughs> you send me out to work on a pole with one I think you had a supervisor there. Somebody needs to be there to answer for these mistakes that you made. And I'm not picking on you guys, I'm not hearing you. Show out or anything. I'm just speaking the truth. This is where we are. This is the reality of it. Uh, it's time for something to be done. Accountability. I know mean, you guys have invested a lot of money into this thing. Uh, I grew up in history, guys, for you guys sit next to me. I'm <coughs> here as much as I do. And, and it's just, it's never ending. I think you know what I'm trying to say. I've been 30 years, 32 years in the world doing the same thing. I'm trying to hold them accountable for what they do for a living. You know, four radio stations. I fought with this since out nine in the flood and, and crumbled the crop of infrastructure. Um, at this point today, <clears throat> being kept informed all along the way, being one of the people on the release, and being one of the city's official release, my demand. Um, I couldn't be more impressed with the effort and I just went through this transition over the last two and a half weeks. Department head meetings with every single person. And every single one right now, the personnel will tell you that I asked this question. Can I walk this earth? Can I walk into that meeting and assure these people that we're doing everything we could possibly do? Now, I have suggested as we get these new updated meter reading, electronic meter readers, that we don't need people to walk the streets anymore, that I want them to walk the 125 crossings we have over waterways with our sewer system, that I want them to put eyes on it as well. I didn't want this job if we didn't pass flaws and I couldn't commit $40 million to the further improvements on the system because I can't come up with $40 million over the next four years to keep our promise to you guys and the aggressive timeline that we're on in repairs of this. That uh, I can't waste a little bit. I do have to um, We get parking trouble a little. We kind of done a little before we got approval because we wanted to start that process. And now we officially have an approval, and that 10 million gallon catch basin will assure us that, uh, that nothing. We're two miles from the river now, and that catch basin will assure us nothing gets near that river at the treatment plant on the rock manuals. We continue to rehab on those for, for probably the next decade. You know that. You know how many there are, you know what we're doing. Additional signage is a great idea as well, John. Um, you want me to hop off the bridge? I'll just leave one of well, them. I know, but I want you to come back to us all that have decontaminated well, which is the vintage over, and say that the city of Del Doxon is going to support the effort to reimburse us for the well decontamination. I am four wells. But these folks all live where I am, and they're all going to have to have wells that need decontaminated. It's not a trivial process. Yeah. That slide had wanted to address a few minutes ago to expound a little on what Ms. Davis had said. We refer to ourselves in Madison County probably <coughs> as fiscally constrained, but in reality we are poor. Right. That is, we are poor, and you know that. Uh, our residents 
most of them don't have the money to pay for the water filtration systems. We had people today who spoke in Madison. They pay anywhere from 45 to 6,000 and above just to get the initial system. That doesn't include replacing the different parts that have to be replaced yearly or however often they need to. When you start talking about buying water and uh, it's costing our county right now several thousand just to do the testing for the people because of course we're doing it for free. So for them, because they shouldn't have to pay for it. But when you look at all the different areas that the people have to try to cover to make sure that they're not using contaminated water, a lot of them don't have the money for it. And because of that, truthfully, a lot of them who have lived close to the river for many, many years, they don't bother. And we don't know what they may at times deal with as a result of the water. But they know they don't have the money. They've always been there, or they've been there for a number of years, and they, they say another spill, and they just don't bother. But the bottom line, and I think with most things, the bottom line just comes down to money, and it hits a lot of our residents very hard along that area. I have a question. I, as far as accountability goes, when these spills happen, are you, is anybody fined? I mean, it seems like is there anything I'm like you just spilled X amount of raw sewage? Does the EPA find the city? Is there any kind of the EPA, EPB can find the city. But that is not like automatic. It's not, it's not automatic, automatic or is it based on the gallon or whatever it is. But they, they do have that authority to to uh, have they? Uh, have they ever? I've been here, I've been sitting there for two years. Um, since I've been here two years, no, that we've not had We've been going on for a long time. Before I've not even happening, so. We're, we're, under, we're under the similar, uh, still from the with, uh, with uh, EPD. Uh, but um, as far as I can remember back, I don't think we've had a fine. They, you know, what they've done in lieu of fines is they added more projects to keep the problem from happening. They, they'll, they'll do that many times. <laughs> Rather than a dollar value, they'll add more projects to the consent order. How will the notification system change? Notifying, notifying us downstream. And the reason I ask, a year or two ago, my, oh yeah, we have one place in North Carolina, my last playing around the water, we kayak a lot, Scott, like you do, and enjoy the water, get the truck, I'll have a text from a local official, stay out of the river. This field happened four or five days prior. We just found out that day. And I've been in the river playing in my lab and having a good time on the North River. How will the notification system change to guarantee that everyone, even those who don't have email and internet access along the river, know about these bills? Because that, to me, is criminal, criminal neglect because you're endangering their lives. I mean, because you're in that water, animals are in that water, there farm animals are in that water, and no one knows. I don't think I have an answer to that. You have to anybody on that email list. You can get it by phone, you can get it by um, notification. You get more specific with it as well. Um, if it's anywhere near a waterway, obviously we don't want an egg on anybody's face. We had um, one person in the campground get a reverse 911 call, and we have quite a few people in the campground have no <coughs> internet. So we're trying to take care of ourselves, and we're trying not to be dependent upon any government organization, because we do, you know, with the exception of a few people, um, you know, a lot of the people in Hamilton County, it's a poor county. So the, the folks that can help, I think, are helping <coughs> to do the job of it. But there has to be several ways of getting their advice. Mr. Parker, does anybody here from Madison have a uh, Do y'all live within how far the river? Three miles. Did y'all get our code red announcements on your telephone? Yes. Okay, so we have a code red system in Madison County in our emergency management can uh, pinpoint target areas in the county, put out a, a blast phone call, uh, automated message that, that gives those type of warnings. Well, I'm glad to see that in our county, that, I think that system worked pretty good. And uh, so I don't know if Hamilton or Swanee has code red or similar type of announcement notification system. Y'all are you relying a lot on the systems to tell you communications. I'm assuming that their battery or generator backup in the, in the event of a catastrophic electrical outage, they all are on 
battery or a generator. Like that. Right. Right. That would be, you can purchase more and more generators to back up to that. My other question is, and I don't know if you can do it in this particular area, but right, have y'all looked at uh, high injection uh, well well pumps for overflow of the sewage? They do use them in Collier County, in South Florida. They pump 35,000 feet down in, into the aquifer, but scientists have said by the time it comes out in the ocean, it's purified. Yeah, now that's a uh, pretty uh, not wild allowed statement. Them to do it. Yeah, we only allow it to be surface discharge. I know down out in Gainesville, Florida, they have a deep well injection. They actually, instead of surface water injection, they dug a well 3,500 feet, they're pumping it in the ground 3,500 feet. Uh, you know, some pros and cons, some folks are pro to that, some folks don't think they, uh, that should be happening either, so, you know, still some science needs to be done up in this area to make sure it's about right. soil conditions. Yeah, well, they use a bubble there. system in South Florida. Yep. They inject them into the uh, brackish water They're system. going into the lower, lower Florida. I don't know if yeah, you can do that more up. Yeah, I don't know. You get higher up higher in the sugar, it's hard to get those. Right. Well, lower. whatever you can do to communicate with us, get us some information, and support us, uh, and me as a citizen, I greatly appreciate your help. I have a question about those three alerts in Florida. The first one was put out on the 10th when all anybody knew was there was spill. Okay, better safe than sorry. The second one was put out when, as I understand it correctly, Valdosta found an elevated bacterial level at US 84, which I believe <coughs> we heard earlier is right next to the state line. Uh, does anyone in Valdosta know how many river miles from US 84 to the state line? Uh, 27, or about three days. And is anybody measuring at the intermediate boat ramps to see how the sewage is moving down the river? Valdosta, for example, is Valdosta doing that? No. We have a, an answer from Tom Murdy of Swanee River Water Management District. We have done that, yeah. As you know. <coughs> I mean, Did you do it at Knight's Ferry and Lancaster? We haven't done it consistently, but we have done it. When a spill, you know, when a, when a location popped up, at, you know, either at 84 or at 31, and we looked upstream and downstream in conjunction with DOH and DEP on specific days. Yeah, on specific days. And we did a site. We moved bracket. Okay, and with the nice here in Nick and USA yeah. 4 and state line, but Valdosta has not. Valdosta basically flushed its sewage down the river. No, no, sir. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. And Mike, just, just like the gentleman here said, when we got that hot spot at Mike's Creek, we went down there. And we took our crew down there. They took samples. They did the lab work. We took it to a lab in Thomasville where the other folks were going to say, oh, they're just making the numbers up. The numbers that you were posted on your Facebook were much higher than the independent lab and our own folks said. So I really can't let you stand there and not say we haven't been out there doing it. And you haven't returned that data in response to the open records request I fired a week ago? I will have to talk to the city clerk about that. You didn't file it with me, sir. I asked you in your office earlier. And I gave you all the data. You asked me for the data every 